Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer Bun. Today I'd like to show you how you can paint this loose floral for yourself. This is hydrangeas in a glass vase done in a very expressive style. It is a lot of fun. I think you'll really enjoy it. I'm going to break everything down that you need to know step by step. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that if I'm demonstrating a color mix, talking about a tool, talking about a technique, the camera is pointing right at that. So you really have like eyeline on that at home, helping you paint it much better. In the interest of helping you have a much better experience painting at home, if you check the description, there's a link to the website where there is a free traceable. So if you don't want to do the draw along with me, you don't have to. You can just use the traceable. There is also something we call a mini book that is written out instructions where each step has each tools listed out and each color mix listed out which is incredible so if you're watching along with the video and you're like wait what were those colors you can like flip 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 to the book and have it so that's how invested we are into your painting success which i hope really excites you if it does get your paint get your brushes come back right now and i'm going to show you how to paint this eight by eight surface as we like to do i have the wisher intention on it and this has actually been suggested by several community members a relief from lupus or autoimmune illnesses and a cure for lupus and autoimmune illnesses and i definitely wish that in the world i thought it was a nice one to pair with hydrangeas so you guys know i know you guys see the colors in the list at the beginning of the video but just so you know where they are on the palette Thalo blue, ultramarine blue, cad yellow medium, quinacridone magenta, cad red medium, burnt sienna, thalo green. This is the titanium yellow or Naples yellow light and our titanium white. So that's where everything is. All right. We're going to do something kind of crazy today. Oh, what craziness. Oh, we're going to paint with spice color and be crazy and like have like contrasting peeking through and do some fun layering. So like so, something for the weekend to lighten us up in the middle. I mean, this is like it's the middle of our journey, right? This is when everyone's like, seemed like a good idea at the beginning of the month. Felt really good about it. Now I'm like wondering what my choices were that brought me here. <laughs> so is this like spice from Arrakis spicy? Yeah. Yeah. Spice from Arrakis spicy. And it, what we mean is the movie Dune or Book Dune, whichever you're more familiar with. I, I know book. The movies just kind of never quite give me what the book gave me. The first one was pretty good, I have to say. The, know, the Baron Harkonnen just freaked me out when I was a little kid. <laughs> well, yeah, that was well represented. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to begin with my mop brush, right, which is a one-inch mop, gives me a soft blend. What if you don't have this brush? Just use any big brush that you have. We're going to be doing a blended background. My words were done in watercolor, and... um. I'm going to blend that out. I chose yellow because I'm going to be doing an orange background. Oh. What? I know. So let's take a little of our cad red and our cad yellow and do a bright orange background. Mm hmm Just orangey orange. Orangey, 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 orange. That's a good orange. And that's going to be peeking through. We're going to be painting layers. Now this might be a harder one, a harder set of techniques when you have student paints. Because what happens is sometimes your paints aren't pigmented enough. And you guys will have to let me know what your challenges are with that. So I can be thinking of ways to get around those, work around those challenges. Um, this is just one of those more kind of fun advanced techniques that it is true. The heavy body, highly pigmented paint does a little bit better. Because uh, we can come in with more opaque colors. Even the yellow, even though it's super transparent, is still more opaque than uh, student paints. And, and that's really how they save money on the student paints to, you know, get, spare you guys in cost is uh, pigment loads and fillers. I'm just painting the whole thing orange. You're sitting with me going through it real time, painting the whole thing orange. Making sure all the little white bits of canvas are covered up. Orange, you glad we didn't have to paint the background black again? <laughs> Orange, you glad? Orange, you glad? I am. Banana. 
Um, I don't know. I'm making a, a lot of work of a very simple task here. <laughs> Sometimes you'll do that in art. You'll make a lot of work of a very simple task. I often say that to myself. This is a lot of work of a very simple task. Let us not dwell on it. Leave the light on. We'll be waiting for you. That's a quote from my very favorite podcast. <laughs> I don't. That's not from me. I don't. No. I don't listen to the podcasts. You don't. You miss out. I miss out. You miss out. You miss out so much. Instead, you miss out I so have... much. <clears throat> I'm a patron of my very favorite podcast, and they say my name at the end of the podcast. So now you'll have to go out and listen to all the podcasts. I do you... to hear my name. To hear. To hear my name. And you're going, what's your favorite podcast? It's Midnight Burger. If you like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you'll you'll dig it. Like, you know, if that's like your world, you know, you'll really, really dig it. I love it, man. It is just, I mean, I want it to be a TV show. Like a full-fledged, I'm going to see it on HBO TV show. I don't really care who carries it. Netflix, BBC. Anybody. BBC, huh? BBC does all the best ones. Uh, it, uh, it could be a BBC production. Slightly under budget, but really well written, especially if you can get Moffat involved. I don't know that you guys care about that, but we're going to try this game. This. I got some feels about that. British. We all do. Yeah. We, oh my gosh, if Moffat and this creator were together, I think I might lose my mind. I put it into the universe. Comedy okay. and roadsters. That's what <laughs> comes from Britain. <laughs> try this and I'll meet you back. So here we are, our canvas is dry. Now in this stage, you're gonna get the traceable off the website and transfer it onto the canvas, or you're gonna draw along with me. Now drawing along with me, I want you to draw yours in with a chalk tool. I have my Dritz chalk tool here. That's what I like. You could just have a piece of kid's chalk. I am going to sketch it in paint and I do it that way so you can see it. But I want your chalk lines to be this faint here, right? So for you, faint little lines to follow. For me, paint. And that's just because it's going to really help you see what's going on. I'm going to use a little white and uh, maybe some phthalo blue. To sort of sketch this in. And let's begin by making the bottom of the vase. It's like a little smile on the canvas. And then I'm going to come up on one side. Kind of come out wide in the belly and then scoopy back in. Same thing on the other side. Wide the belly and scoopy back in. Right. Okay. And we're going to have uh, maybe a little bit of a waterline implied in here just to know where it's going to be when we start doing the sort of abstracted version of that. And I'm going to very lightly sketch out where I feel my flowers are going to be. The sort of general space that they're going to take up is actually it's sort of easier than you might think. Right, so I know that, you know, in this space, the hydrangeas are going to be pulling that much room, right? Um, if you think this is the halfway line, the furthest part of my hydrangea out is to here on the surface, right? So a couple inches from the edge, you know, I'm leaving interesting spaces in kind of contour lines. See that there? making sure that these spaces are fascinating the negative spaces as well as the positive spaces whenever you get loose or abstracted with something that stuff is very important guess what it's a whole step yep. you stepped it that's really all you got to do step. in this step So uh, the first part I want to do is put in some of the background. There's going to be a little play around the edges of the flowers, but I want to kind of put that in. This is where you're going to see some of the interesting color mixing mm -hmm. happening. I will use this hog brush. This is the number 16 by Raphael. It's in hog bristles. For this step, you could use any bright brush you have, any flat brush. This is just, I, I want kind of like square strokes, so I would recommend a square shaped brush. But beyond that, you are a lot of freedom. I am going to come over here and I'm going to get my Naples yellow light and a little of my phthalo green. And it gets really into that. It's a wild color, isn't it? It really is. Maybe a smidge of white into it. If you don't have this color, 
read my blog on Naples Yellow Light, Titan It Yellow. It will tell you everything you need to know. Exchanges, all the things. And all the things you didn't know you need to know. All the things you didn't know you needed to know. And I'm going to come here and paint in sort of a square, strong brush stroke manner. And you can see some of the oranges showing through as it is supposed to. I'm painting thickly. If you have student paint, you may need to add more white to your mix to get the coverage going until we get down into the green. And that's just, you know, that's just the struggle. Um, every medium, every paint has a personality. You just got to get to know the personality of your paint and work within it. I'm going to come in a little bit where I have my flowers. And the reason I come in a little bit is so that um, I'm adding a little more phthalo green there. It's really kind of a pop, isn't it? This is going to make these purple flowers zing in our eyes. And you want your flowers to zing, don't you? I do. I like zingy flowers. Zingy flowers are super appealing. Now, as I come in around the flowers a bit, I might come in where I know I'm going to have them with some dark green. See what I'm doing here? Loose open brush strokes brush strokes it can be hard if you're used to painting very tightly right a little bit there i think i may want to come back into the yellow and just make sure that stays pretty light up there even into the even into that keeping it light yeah the other thing about using the naples yellow or tight knit yellow depending on which paint you have, is that it's so different in, I mean, look at it, it's kind of a yellow green versus a yellow orange. So it really just is different. So when we mix with it, we'll get very different results. Isn't that kind of fun? Yeah. Come in here and add a little pop of dark as well. You know, and I'll have blue petals going kind of up over that line. So really, it will blend very, very well. I'm going to wipe off and get a little bit of white. It already has a vibrancy to the eye. Now I'm going to pull a little of my yellow green out and I'm going to come over into my orange. Look at that. Ooh. So I'm taking this color that I have up top, kind of blending it as I go down. You guys, see how I'm doing that? That's giving me kind of an interesting um, space, so to speak. In this abstract. You now, because I have, I'm not creating like, this is a table, this is a wall. I'm, I'm abstractly defining space. So a little bit of the yellow and the green and then coming into the orange and it does mute out but because we're using from the same mixes as we go down it has a a, a unification across the color you're so quiet i must not be making sense today <laughs> no you're making perfect sense i'm just watching what you're doing because <laughs> it's a little different than what we do yeah a little cross hatchy kind of i stuff. figured you know it's a weekend day right a little different than what we <laughs> Mix do. Mixing it up. Mixing it up. Got a little more yellow in there. This is a good skill to have, guys. It's good to know how to do this.
Adding a little white there. And again, because the red and the orange and green, they go together and they neutralize each other. So it's super saturated up here. And then coming down, it's just not as bright, not as vibrant. Is that what you want? Yes, yes, it is. Right? But with these pops of the vibrant orange kind of radiating through. Making sure that there's a nice transition. All right. That's a lot. Emotionally, you might be really spent right now. <laughs> you might be like, I can't believe I did that. I haven't done anything like that. It felt so weird. But it's a lot of fun. Um, a definite good technique to know about and to practice. And the result you saw in the thumbnail is just so it's completely worth it. Remember, the mini book, you download that. You look at the steps, the color mixes in each step. Uh, one of the things I get asked about is what are the symbols? Um, if you see a little alligator mouth go that way, it's greater than. And if you see a little alligator mouth go this way, it's lesser than. And if it's an equal, it's the same then. And that helps you understand what color you might use more of in a mix. Like the times I was more Naples yellow might have been a greater than Naples yellow. And the time I had more phthalo green, the greater than might have been facing the green. Does that make sense? It does. I don't know. Y'all remember that from math. I don't even know if they do that in new math. Who knows? Maybe those things mean nothing anymore. <laughs> the world changes. All right, we come back. I'll show you the next step. So now I'm going to change to my filbert. You could use a round if you don't have a filbert. I just like the rounded edge to work all these spaces. It's just a preference that I have. I'm going to get it wet. And then I'm going to mix the beginning of a stem color. And let's say the first stem color is burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And let's bring a little stem down the vase like that, right? The stems in these little vases tend to go sort of every which way. Mm. All the ways. Yeah, they can be all the ways. And it's sort of fun to paint all the mishmash of stems. So mishy mashy. It's so mishy mashy. Right? And then what's fun for us is that we get to come in between those spaces and create the effect of water. I've done this a few times on uh, my channel, and it's always actually gotten a great result for everybody. So I'm always excited when I bring it back out. Mm -hmm. Sort of a fun thing. Now maybe I get a little kind of white into there. And perhaps place the stems in order, right? Like that one goes in front because it's got a brighter highlight. Right. So the way that we drag that line across there and have lights and darks can be what really sets that up. Now, that's a weird thing to take in, the messy sticks. You get the messy sticks. When we come back, we'll continue on in our base. So I have my round back out, my number four round. I'm going to get it wet, and I'm going to go ahead and get some of my phthalo blue, and I might even get a little of my phthalo green together. It makes kind of a turquoise. And I'm going to turn my canvas just so I have a nice access to a line, and I'm going to come across here and imply a little water line. And come to the top of it, maybe with a little bit of white. And that's how we're going to first speak about our waterline. And then I can come through the back side. Yeah, I'm making kind of an implied ellipse. Now I can see that a little better. Oh, you can see better? It wasn't, it wasn't I, showing? Well, on the overhead, it's hard to see it, but I, I can see it much better from over here. Okay. So we're just kind of implying the surface of the water, right? That's fun. Get a little bit of our white hair. I'm going to come on the outside of the... The vase.
I can get into my dark blue, right? That dark blue gray. Yeah. With my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue. I'm just putting a little of that down there. Maybe I'm going to come right here on the vase with a little bit of that darker shadow. And perhaps a little bit there. It's always interesting to me where you might notice darker shadows. I'm going to put a little bit there. And then as I come down, I'm going to add more white. I lost a little more of my stick than I wanted to, so I can always come back with my main stick color. Make sure that that's still there somewhat. Now let's get a little of our turquoise. Maybe some white, some of the Naples yellow. I'm painting in between. These sticks, creating the little different lights and highlights in the water. Yeah, and that really makes the you know, you're you're painting all those little reflections and come up here, add a reflection. I mean, like I don't know how to tell anyone to do it, but I watch you do it. It's <laughs> <pretty> cool. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It is. It's super fun. Now I'm getting some of my background color up here. Oh, uh, you want to put that stick back, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. A little yellow. So a lot of times it's, you know, just finding all those little colors that we're yeah. playing with. And then come back with my dark value. Which is interesting, we're not using black today in our um, canvas. Yeah, I was wondering why, why is that? Um, you know, I thought it would help with the brightness of it, and we didn't really have a value in any of this that needed a black to get us there. Oh. You know, sometimes you have a value where you've got to get to a deep color, and black's the best way to get into that shadow, but sometimes you don't really need that. Well, see, there you go making sense. I don't mean to. You know, I might come in and um, make a very, very light color here. Smidge of green into it. Get a little pink. I think that becomes a surprise of color. We still got the orange kind of coming through. And then I'm going to come right over the front. Oh, look at that. That bright reflection. Yeah. And it's in that top reflection that we really see the vase. Come in with that white highlight. Mm -hmm. Look at us. We just painted this very abstract base and we just really had a good time doing it. That's all we got to do there. Isn't that well, fun? It's just pop. There I, it is. I feel pretty accomplished because I watched you do it. It was just fun. Just fun. Take a deep breath. Sometimes painting loosely is frustrating, right? Because it's where you go, I know kind of my construction. I know what it needs to be. And and then you can kind of simplify it. But if you're still trying to figure that out, sometimes it's like you're really like working it. And that's okay. That's how you get there. That's how you get there. Okay. Let's dry everything and come back. So now we're going to put kind of loosely in the beginnings of our hydrangeas and then we'll come back and come back with some leaves but we got to get this first deep hydrangea kind of layer in i'm going to come back to my hog right the number 16 
because it's a bright brush, you use whatever bright synthetic or hog that you have. I'm going to get a little of my ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta together. I have more ultramarine blue in the mix than magenta. So it's going to stay kind of fairly deep and uh, purplish. And we're going to really kind of create a deep value and some beginning shapes that will be our hydrangea um, flowers. I'm going to get these up to blue, blue, blue. Mm. It's in the contrast that you'll get there, though. Well, the purple nice. and the orange are very contrasty. They are very so, contrasting, I'm aren't they? I'm surprised that you're doing the purple over orange. It's just like... It just is... It's a surprise, right? And when we get into the blue, it's going to be so much. Now, I'm, I'm, I might leave little pops of orange peeking in. It's a surprise, in. she says. Hmm? Nothing. No, it's a surprise. <laughs> Is that what I said about today? <laughs> yeah. Where I was like, you'll be surprised, John. Surprise! You'll love it. <laughs> Let's see what we're going to do. But this gives us a start to see where we're going to tuck some leaves in. You know, how we want to build this out. Also, I want to... Trying to figure out how I want to... Petal the ground. There we go. Because you want some, some little petals that are going to hit the ground. Trying to make a nice arrangement of them. Like you do. Mm. Like I do. Hopefully you do with me. On a, on a bright, shiny moment in our lives keeping a little of the orange popping 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 orange we've done this a few times on the channel abstract florals and man everybody always loves them everybody always loves them who doesn't love a floral? Who doesn't love a floral, right? Okay. Now, while we're here and we have this color, let's take a kind of thin version of it. Right? I'm going to come under here. And I'm going to just kind of begin the process of maybe speaking about a shadow. It's very glazed. You could use glazing medium here if you wanted to. Just all glazy. I've just got to figure out its kind of little line. And I want it to be light at first. I'll come in and do some heavier stuff, but I just want to kind of see this light version of it first. I'm sort of picking it up. So I'm going to run it kind of a little bit out over those petals. All right. I think is where I'm going to go. A little bit out over those petals. And we'll come back later and play with that. So that's all. But see, even that little bit of shadow, right? It anchors everything. It's crazy it how it does that, but it doesn't. Let's dry and come back. So this needs some leaves. And I'm going to tuck some of them in now. I may tuck a few in later, but I want to tuck some in now. And my leaves are going to start with my phthalo green and my burnt sienna. Like leaves do. And I'm using my filbert. This is my synthetic filbert, number eight. I'm going to come over here and just on the edge, fine line up. And I'm going to pull back. Each press being a little bit wider. And over here, just a little bit more. There we go. That one looks pretty good. It's just the start of something. Hmm, I want to lose that reflection, so I guess I'll put one here. 
What a nice edge to it, you know? Hydrangea leaves have a bit of a sawtooth feel to them, so that's what I'm kind of using the brush to play with here. Ah. And they're, you know, they're nice and large, and that's kind of a wonderful thing about them. So let's say that there's one sort of, you know, coming down here. The nice long, long little toe there on the edge of my brush. That's how I'm getting that. And then come back, you know. That's super fun. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't mind that at all. It's nice little pops of those greens. Now I'm going to come in and get a little yellow into my green. Come back over where I started out. And maybe work a little bit of a highlight of yellow there. Just the start of it, right? Picking that up, brighter green. Now for the next layer on the leaves, it really needs to be dry, but we don't need to call it another step. So we're gonna dry here in this step and through the magic of video, uh, be dry. You, yours might take a couple minutes to dry. So don't panic if it does, that's okay. Sometimes things take a second to dry. So let's dry it and we'll come in and put the bright pop of highlight on it. So let's get a lot more yellow over to our green color. So it's quite bright, quite yellow bright. green. And then I'm gonna add white to it once I have it lightened with the yellow. And I'm gonna come here to the edge of my leaves and I'm gonna just sort of dry brush in that pop. Isn't that wild? That's crazy cool. Gorgeous. Let's come in and Ooh, there we go. So beautiful. Great way to do leaves, by the way. Wonderful. Come in here, same thing. I'm leaving a little bit of the dark edge of that leaf, if you can see that kind of out. There we go. Oh, we got leaves really do they look cool too they're just cool wonderful leaves and now we get to paint a bunch of flowers which is like the super fun parts so let's come back and do that So hydrangeas are made up of lots of little flowers and there's a lot of ways that you can paint them, that you can represent them. Often the temptation is to do every little flower. I've done that in a video before, it was a lot of fun. But this one we're gonna be more expressive and more loose and we're gonna use value to create the shapes of the hydrangeas, which we've also done before and was a lot of fun. Let's get into our wonderful blues though. So we're gonna get into our thalo blue and I'm gonna put a smidge of white into it. And this is really gonna pop, um, on that purple. And I'm going to use little short brush strokes. And I'm gonna to begin to talk about little uh, structures of individual flower ah. blooms. And they are rounded, for the most part, fairly rounded. I don't want to be too one direction with my brush stroke because the petals kind of catch light so many different ways. And a little... Let's say there's one like maybe peeking out right here. I don't want him over, over that green leaf. He's behind that green leaf. That texture kind of makes the... Yes. And notice that I'm just a little darker here just to make sure that that little grouping and this grouping feel like they're part of a different grouping. 
Similar thing up here. Initially much darker. Oh, I kind of have taken out more of the orange than I would like, so I'm going to try to reserve where I can. The little pops are a big deal. We have lots of rounds, so we're okay. Definitely, this is its own cluster. Maybe a little white into this so we can kind of see this one just a smidge more. Looking pretty good. And then here at the back. We have another and I, I want to make sure that as I am I am in here it's much darker there at the base okay starting to see it oh yeah all right I'm rinsing out a little bit but you know I also want to rinse out and get a little of my white and blue together So that it feels like what we see up there. There's a little bit on the ground there. That's important. I might even put another one. Just trying to make sure. I added another little one there. Oh, yeah. Just trying to make sure it looks like there's a nice dusting of petals that have happened. A rinse out. Um, I'm going to give this a dry. You could paint on it wet into wet, but I kind of want to layer things where each layer has a structure. So let's dry it and come back and do another layer. So we're going to do an interesting thing here. We're really going to be pulling these apart from each other. We want to leave dark values where there's depth under the, the cluster of flowers, and we're going to do some pops of color. So you're going to grab maybe even a little of your cad red and quin magenta and a smidge of white. And you can come here and just get a couple little pops there. This will help us feel like maybe there's a flower tucked behind. I'm going to get my Naples yellow. See how that is? Just a little. Yeah. And then maybe a little there. Not too much. These are these are like whoa moments. Whoa moments tend to lose their whoa if you get too much of them going. It's just a, a hint of something in the painting. It's what mm. takes it out of that, you know, uh, you know, doing like kind of a painting at a quick one hour, two hour painting class into that. I did a painting and it's like the sauce of awesome. Ooh, we might also want to include, even though I just rinsed that out, we might also want to include a little of this color at the base. Kind of maybe Just the way you tie things up that are one area of the canvas into another area of the canvas. The way you do. Huh. All right. That's looking pretty good. We've rinsed out. So that was, again, the quinacridone, a little cad red, sometimes a little titanium white, a little bit of that Naples yellow light. I'm going to get some more phthalo blue. And this time I'm going to put, oh, goodness, just a smidge of phthalo green into it. And then some titanium white. We're going to say I've got light here. Light coming in from that side. I should let it be darker, though, so I might wipe off a little bit and come back with a little bit of my dark. Making sure that the base of that one palm has that shadow. Mm -hmm. 
Come back with a quite a bit of light. I might even get a little of my navels yellow in there. Look at that pop. So vibrant. Very impressionistic of this flower. It's it's doing great impressions. It's just it's a great impression of itself, right? A little of the phthalo green and titanium white. Fantastic at charades. It, it's just the best. People are always amazed at what this flower does in charades. <laughs> really hitting some nice light there. You know, getting into some deeper blue right here to depth that flower. Still holding some of that orange popping through. Just a little. That's the trick. Man, that's hard to hold, isn't it? It is. It's super hard to hold. It's cool looking, though. A little bit of the navel yellow and just kind of catch that there. See how that almost talks about, like, there's light hitting those petals. Mm-hmm. I like to rinse out so my brush doesn't get too logged with everything that's going on. Coming up here. But then I really, really want to have some light. I'm going to do something kind of surprising. I'm going to get a little of my quinacridone. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Kind of blend that here. And that kind of grays it and puts this weird glow in there. Make some textury bits. It does. It does. And we're just playing with that. Now, the trick with these hog brushes, if you're doing a hog brush with me, is they get too wet. So I'm always wiping mine out with a towel. Oh. If you're like, how you getting there? That's how I'm getting there. Now, I'm looking at this and I kind of want to, I want to have this petal be... I wanted a little less tight flower there. Does that make sense? Because flowers are often not, not mm -hmm. that tidy. A little more blue where I need it. And these little puffs, you know, they're more in the distance, right? Leaving that shadow there. So cool. I'm just loving it. Well, highlights on those petals. That's what we do. So we're just pulling what's up there in there. A little touch there, maybe. It's it's a funny thing to do, but sometimes a little touches back in. Mm. Oh, I'm just happy. Looks All right. Great. Now we just got to come in and put that final shadow in and we're done. So let's uh, come back and put our last little bit of the shadow in and then we're, we've done the painting. All right. What a nice day. So I need to create a little depth here. I'm going to get my number four round synthetic. Right. I'm going to come along the bottom and just make sure that there's a bit of that happening there. Right. That's very good. And I'm going to go ahead and get some of my quinacridone magenta into it, which makes it quite dark visually. And I'm going to just make sure I'm just brushing out that there's a bit of a, a shadow kind of coming out from the vase, which we glazed earlier. Right. We did. We caught a little bit of it earlier. We can also make sure that there's little bits of something under our petals. Yep. Kind of a little bit of a rinse. 
And I can always go back in with just my round brush and kind of finish the edge of that vase. So like there's little, you know how sometimes the base of a glass where it's thick, there's a bit of a reflection in that. Yeah. And that's the thing that can happen. Make sure that I've got little highlight highlights on some of that. Ah, there's just, you know, I could just doodle with this all day, but now I just want to do 20 of these on this subject because it was just fun and relaxing to paint. And sometimes it's nice when something is fun and relaxing to paint. You find that on almost every one of these. I, I mean, I do like it. It's just, it's a good experience for me. All right, I'm going to get my number one monogram liner and come over to my very bright green with some white. Right. I'm making a very light color and I'm making it light like this so that it will show, but I'm also picking color that is present in the painting. Mm -hmm. And so that this is going to be visible, but not like the whole paint. If I were to do like cad red right here, the whole painting would become about the signature. Yeah. And um, that is not what my personal art journey is about. I'm not judging anybody whose personal art journey is about that. I just work really hard to make a composition and it always like gets to me if like my signature throws the whole thing off. Because I never felt like it was that important that I signed it. Huh. <laughs> it's like I just spent hours. But it's there. You can see it. It's still though the painting that it is. What do you guys think? Wasn't that fun? Well, that was a wonderful midweek painting. I feel something fun, something light, getting us back into something a little loose again. I like to bring us through those, you know, where we start to tighten up a little bit and then we come back and we go, oh no, let's loosen up a bit. And then we start to tighten up a little bit and then we come back and we loosen up a little bit. And that's always really fun. Um, I have other uh, florals in this style. In fact, I'm gonna have to add that to this one, to that playlist because I do this every once in a while. So if you love this style of painting, thumbs it up. Um, definitely hit the subscribe button because more lessons are coming and that's how you get the notifications. Um, really, right now, what I'd love to do is see your painting. What you could do next, I would love to see your painting. John would love to see your painting. So share that online. I'm on almost all the social media. Uh, you can hashtag it into the Art Sherpa for me to find it. We've got a private group on Facebook if you want to share it with like a secure friends that are going to be really great and supportive and encouraging. If you need encouragement, please come by the group. Um, definitely. If you came for just this one, I'd love to entice you into doing all 30 of the acrylic Aprils, but no worries. I've got a thousand other paintings for you to do. Now, here we are middle of the week. So you know what I'm going to say? You need to be good to yourself and be good to others. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.